very happy to be here. Uh, it's, I think it's the third time speaking in a cinema. That's always very exciting because normally I'm sitting uh, back there watching a movie and now I'm standing here in front of you. So today I want to talk with you about voice. Why is voice happening right now? What will happen with voice and what you as a brand can do to be present on digital assistants like Alexa, Google Assistant, Siri, Cortana and so on. First, I want to ask you a question. Who of you, and raise your hand if it's true, has an Amazon Echo at home? Uh, some of you? Who has a Google Home at home? Ah, very good. Who has a Google uh, Apple HomePod at home? Ah, no one. That's a very good uh, distribution of, of smart speaker uh, sales um, in Germany. Last question, who of you have used a smart speaker on a smartphone in the last two years? Nearly everyone, that's good. So most of you have tried um, and worked and listened to a digital assistant. Today I want to dig a little bit deeper into that field and want to first show you what is happening right now and why is it happening right now. Secondly, I want to show you what you as a brand can do and uh, which variables are important if you are thinking about implementing a voice strategy. Third, I want to show you what voice SEO, so probably all of you heard of uh, search engine optimization, and this will change in the next 10 years. This is changing right now, but it will dramatically change over the next 10 years. So what should you think about? And last but not least, I want to shortly talk about what will happen in five or 10 years with digital assistants. So let's start, let's start with a change. In the last 20 or 30 years, you all have learned to navigate or to talk to machines. You learned how to use the keyboard, you learned how to use a remote control, and you learned how to use a smartphone by touching it. And now this turns 180 degrees and machines start to understand us. And they start to understand us in the most natural way possible when we speak. And that happens based on three changes, three radical changes. And the first change is a technical improvement. And probably all of you would agree, sure, based on technical improvement, there are new interfaces emerge, new technologies um, come uh, to, to a lot of people, but there happened something much bigger and this improvement got much faster over the last two years. And I want to show you that based on the automatic speech recognition. So the automatic speech recognition is the software, the technology, um, which is capable of translating an audio file into text. So every time you are speaking to your smartphone and you're seeing what you just said on the display, it's the automatic speech recognition translating this audio file into text. And the quality of this automatic speech recognition is measured based on the accuracy rate. So how many words are understood or translated right? If I speak something and it has 20 words, thus this algorithm translates 18 or 19 words correctly, or is it just translating 10 correctly? And when we look, how does this, this accuracy rate evolve? We see that in 2010, 2011, this accuracy rate skyrocketed. Why did it skyrocket? Because machine learning algorithm, deep learning algorithm took over. Why? Because the algorithms uh, got better, we got more data, and all uh, computers got, got much faster. And in 2017, we, we means Microsoft and Google, reached 95% accuracy rate. What is so important about 95% accuracy rate? A call center agent understands 95% of all words the other person is speaking. So we reached human level when it comes to translating an audio file into text about two years ago. And at the moment we are about 97% accuracy rate. So this technology is better than the human being. 
when it comes to translating an audio file into text. It doesn't mean that a machine can also interpret and, and uh, answer as good as a human being, but it can translate an audio file into text. And that's just one example what happened over the last two years so that digital assistant and in, in general speech recognition got much better. So, so that's the first reason. The second reason are the cost for infrastructure and devices. All tech players in the West and in the East are investing a lot into all those technologies. If you as a company wanted to integrate some kind of speech recognition 10 or 15 years ago, you would have invested hundreds of thousands of euros. Now you need to spend just a few cents for millions of API calls. And a device like an Echo Dot just costs 30 euros. So a device which connects to the internet, has a microphone and a speaker, doesn't really cost a lot. And let's go one step further. What do you think? And if you know it, um, don't raise your hand. What do you think? How many people are working at Amazon just on the project Alexa? So how many people at Amazon are coming to the offices every day and are just working on Alexa? Do you have any ideas? So, some, yeah? Five? 10,000? 10? 10? 700? 80? There are between 12,000 and 15,000 people working at Amazon on a daily basis just on Alexa. End of 2017, there were 5,000. End of 2018, there were 10,000. And end of 2019, there are rumors that there are 15,000 people at Amazon just working on Alexa. And if we go to Amazon.jobs, type in Alexa, there are roughly 2,400 open positions. So that doesn't stop. And that, sh that shows a little bit that this is not just one new interface they need to be present on. That's the bet. That's the bet on probably one of the most, maybe the most important gatekeeper to the internet, which you will see in the next 10 to 15 years. That's why Amazon is investing billions of dollars a year, a year. That's why Google is investing billions of dollars a year. That's why Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, all of them are investing billions of dollars to be present there and to be the digital assistant of the customer. So that's the second reason. <coughs> Third reason, the customer accept acceptance. Millions of those devices are located in homes all over the world and customers getting used to talking to any device because they're just used to, to getting feedback. Five or six years ago, I couldn't imagine to talk to, to any device and it answers. Now it's, it's normal for me. Who of you has an Android phone? A lot of you, that's good. Do you know or this, this um, speech line, this search line from Google on your phone? And normally, there is a voice button in this, this search bar. And this voice button, um, when you clicked on it, normally referred to the Google search bar. So you, you, you uh, said something, hey, search for the place of uh, um, the film Park Babelsberg, and then this was translated into text, and the Google search bar was filled. Now, Google announced a few months ago that they will replace that voice button with the Google Assistant button. So every time you are searching on an Android phone for something, you're directly getting into the Google Assistant, and not anymore into the Google search bar. So Google has roughly more than one billion Android phones with the Google Assistant on it out there. So more than one billion devices which directly, as soon as you want to search something via voice, <coughs> go into the Google Assistant and not anymore into the Google search bar. If we go one step further, um, who of you knows um, the featured phones? That's very interesting. That's a phone which costs $20. That's a phone not for Germany, not for the UK, not for the USA. These are phones for India, for example. 
where people can't afford to buy an iPhone or expensive Samsung phone. So it costs $20. And the biggest button on that phone is the voice button, which leads to the Google Assistant. Why? Because 100, well, two, three, uh, 100 millions of people can't write. They can't speak, so they can't speak to the featured phone to get access to the internet, to get access to companies, but they can't write. So just to give you an, uh, an uh, impression of what is happening there from a platform, sp platform perspective. <coughs> so these are the thir three reasons why we think that voice is happening right now, why voice didn't happen 10 years ago and will not happen in 10 years, it is happening right now. And if we see what is happening with technology every 10 years, in 87, the, the desktop PC got a uh, huge market uh, success. The internet in 97, smartphones, what happened in 2007? iPhone launch, right? And we say that in 2017, the Google Assistant and Alexa and Siri and so on got a huge market potential. A few quotes and numbers. In the US, there are 70, uh, 76 million smart speakers out there. In Germany, there are roughly 10 to 12 million smart speakers. The numbers are um, dramatically growing. If we want to believe Gartner, in 2022, one of four interactions between a customer and a company, which is now being done by an app, by a call center, by a homepage, will then be done by a digital assistant because this will be the gatekeeper, this will be the go-to place to talk to a customer. And in three years, there will be one of four interactions. In 10 years, there will be even more. So we deeply think and deeply believe that every company, every service which doesn't integrate voice will not survive. That doesn't matter that everything needs to be done by voice. That means that it also needs to be done by voice. So every company now needs to sta start to think about, okay, what does voice mean for me? Where are my customers? Wh which use cases do I have to be present on voice? So now you might have decided, yeah, voice is something for me and I want to do something on those platforms. How should I do that? And we have a voice formula. So we have four variables you can take home, which you can use to build a good use case on voice. And the first, most important variable is create value for the users. And sure, creating value is important, but what does that mean when we talk about voice? You want to do something easier, faster, and more natural. To give you one example, just ima imagine Max is sitting at the table and wants to add something to his shopping list. Then he can do it with three different, um, in, in three different ways. First way, he finds his phone, he unlocks his phone, he finds the shopping app, he finds the correct product, he clicks add to cart, he closes the app and he puts the phone down. Option one, option two, he gets up, walks to the shopping list, writes the product down, and sits back down. Third option, hey Google, add me to my shopping list. Is that easier? Is that faster? I think so. Is that more natural? Well, we can discuss that. A friend of mine has a, a three-year-old daughter and uh, together everything, um, at home everything is, is uh, equipped by Alexa. So the music is um, playing over Alexa all the lights are controlled by Alexa. And then they were, so the friend of mine and uh, his daughter were driving to the kindergarten and they were listening to music. And then his daughter said, Alexa, turn the music off. Did that work? No. They were driving a Mercedes and Mercedes didn't integrate Alexa. Did she understand that it didn't work? No. Because it's totally normal and natural for her to control the music via the digital assistant. And maybe in five or 10 years, it's much more natural for them to control the lights via the digital assistant than pressing a button on a wall. 
But what is important right now, it needs to be easier and faster. So if you have a use case which makes it easier and faster via voice, then it's a good use case. So I have a high, I need to have a high um, value creation. I divide that with the complexity because we're at the beginning of this development and um, if I want to integrate all my functionalities of my homepage, for example, into a voice application, it gets, the quality gets, gets low. So I really need to think about which use cases are, are small and uh, creates the most value. So high, high value creation, low complexity. I multiply that with the use frequency. The more often the user is using my use case, the better it is, and then I multiply that with the marketing potential. So can I tell my, my customer how to use that? Because normally um, customers at the moment don't really know that they can speak to your, your company via Alexa, Google Assistant, and so on. So you need to have the potential to tell that to your customer. Um, one example, you have an electricity provider um, who needs to have the Zählerstand um, once a year. And they are sending out emails or, or letters um, to tell the customer, well, now please call us, write us, we need your Zählerstand. They could also integrate a small sentence with, hey, tell your digital assistant. Say, Alexa, tell electricity provider X, Y, um, the Zählerstand. So you have a high marketing potential. You don't have a high use frequency. That doesn't matter because you have a very high uh, marketing potential. If you don't have a high marketing potential, you definitely need, need the high use frequency. So if you internally think about voice as an interesting platform, think about this formula. Um, to give you a little bit more practical insight how that could work, I um, took a few examples with me. This example, unfortunately, is in German because it's a German skill. How many people are speaking English here? Just English? Okay, I can, can tell you later wha what the content was. Um, that's a, a skill um, for yoga. So we worked with an insurance from Germany and they said, well, we want to have something on those platforms. We want to have a marketing skill. Um, so we built with them a yoga skill. And uh, I shortly want to show you how this feels when talking to Alexa to a specific skill. And I want to show you two different scenarios. The first scenario is that we talk to the skill the first time. So we have kind of like an onboarding. And the second scenario I want to show you is, okay, I got the onboarding and then I'm directly into the skill. So Alexa, start yoga Zeit. Schön, dass du da bist. Und ganz herzlich willkommen zu yoga Zeit von den VGH-Versicherungen. Hier kannst du was Gutes für deinen Körper und deine Seele tun. Ich bin Julia, deine persönliche Yogalehrerin und sorge mit ganz unterschiedlichen Übungsreihen für ein abwechslungsreiches Yogaerlebnis. Manchmal wirst du für unsere Übungen etwas Zubehör benötigen. Du kannst mich jederzeit fragen, was brauche ich? Um das Training auf deine individuellen Bedürfnisse abstimmen zu können, benötige ich zunächst ein paar Informationen. Hast du etwa 10 oder 15 Minuten Zeit? 10 Minuten. Super. 10 Minuten können schon einen großen Unterschied machen. Soll es eher entspannend oder aktivierend sein? Mm, aktivierend bitte. Aktivierend also. Sehr schön. Das tut dir bestimmt gut. Bist du bereit? Ja. Okay. Ich beginne jetzt deine Session. Unsere heutige Session heißt Starker Rücken. Ich werde eine kurze Sequenz mit dir üben, die dir hilft, deine Energie ins Fließen zu bringen und deinen gesamten Rücken aktiviert. Los geht's! Setz dich auf deine Yogamatte in einen Sitz, der dir bequem ist. Gerne in den Schneidersitz. Okay, I don't want you to sleep, uh, but you can try it out. Um, next scenario, I use that once and I want to open it again. Maybe on the next day, because I want to do yoga again. And I say... Alexa, starte yoga -Zeit. Deine letzte Wahl war eine zehnminütige, aktive Session. Möchtest du diese jetzt beginnen oder eine neue Session auswählen? Mm, diese nochmal beginnen, bitte. Dann lass uns beginnen. Unsere heutige Session heißt Starker Rücken. 
Ich werde eine kurze Sequenz mit dir üben, die dir hilft, deine Energie ins Fließen zu bringen. And so on. We don't want to feed, but you can try. Okay, let's go on. Let's imagine you found a use case. How can you do marketing for what you are doing on the digital systems? There are two ways of content to optimize on. The first w kind of content is when you develop an application on those platforms. So you can develop an application, like you can build an application on iOS and Android, you can build an application on Alexa, on Google Assistant, on Alexa they are called skills, on Google they are called actions, on Bixby they are called capsules, but in general they are just apps, like an iOS and Android. And you can build them, and you can optimize them to be found on those platforms. How can you do that? And in general, how can they be found? The first thing, they can be found through an invocation. I just said, Alexa, start a yoga site. So start the skill. You have a very active invocation. You need to call the skill. Or Alexa, start Deutsche Bahn. You actively need to, to call the name. It's, it's comparable with writing a, a URL. Secondly, you have voice app SEO. So you can tell the, the platform that every time someone is asking for yoga, please use my application because I can do that pretty well. We are starting with that, but we are at the beginning. I, I want to tell you one, one short story. We worked with Kongsta. Who of you knows Kongsta? Yeah, nearly all of, all of you. Uh, it's a German telecommunication provider. And uh, at some day, um, the, the managing director uh, wrote me in WhatsApp and said, Malte, I don't understand that. Please listen to the audio file. And then he, he sent me the audio file and he was asking Alexa, Alexa, who's the best tele telecommunication provider in Germany? And Alexa was answering, Aldi Talk. And he was saying, what? what? Why is there Aldi Talk? Uh, th there needs to be Kongsta. Malte, please change that. And uh, I was thinking, mm, to be honest, I don't really know. Why there's Ali Talk? Ali Talk doesn't have a own application. I really don't know. So um, I asked Ruven. Ruven is a business developer of Amazon here in Berlin, and I asked Ruven, Ruven, why is Ali Talk a pain in there? It doesn't make any sense. And he answered, "Well, Malte, to be honest, I don't know. <laughs> uh, give me a few minutes." One hour later, he got back to me and said, "Well, now it's not happening anymore. If you ask Alexa, he says I don't really know." What happened there, there's a team in Germany um, analyzing all the search queries on Alexa. And every time a search query cannot be answered automatically because there are no structured data, they just integrate manually what the answer is. So there might be a Aldi Talk fan, I don't know, who just wrote down Aldi Talk for that query. So I wanted to, to, to point out that story because we are at the beginning of automa automatic voice SEO. We are getting there and uh, it improves like day over day, but we are at the beginning. And then there's voice app SEA. So SEO, but paid. And we might get there in two or three years. We are not there. It's not possible right now. So let's see. Um, I talked to Axel. Axel is the business developer of, of the Google Assistant in Germany. And I asked him, okay, what's your, what's your status with voice app SEA? So do you have any ideas how to do that? And he said, Malta, to be honest, we are all working on it, but we have no clue how to solve it. Because if you ask your assistant something and you get a voice response, you don't want this one response to be sponsored because it's your assistant. It's not your, like, I don't know, salesperson. So that's a huge challenge also for the platforms because they want you to use the assistant. And if they just give you sponsored answers, they <coughs> Like the customers will not use it anymore. So invocation is working, app SEO kind of working, getting better, voice app SEA not working at all. But there is the potential to be found automatically, but sure, as you probably know, for when you when you create an app or a homepage, you can also actively make advertising for that. And Vodafone asked us a few months ago, I think in May or June, hey, we have a big Gigacube campaign coming out. Who of you knows what the Gigacube is? Uh, not so much. 
the Giga Cube is like a router you can plug in um, to the to the to the electricity, and then you directly have internet. You don't need to plug it into DSL and stuff like that. So pretty new, and they have a German-wide very big marketing campaign. And they asked us, "Hey, can you build an Alexa skill for that?" And because it's very it's a very futuristic campaign, we want to use Alexa. And we said, "Well, yeah, let's do it." We we built a campaign around Alexa, and we did one thing. We created a radio spot for the Alexa skill to tell everyone, hey, you can use this Alexa skill. And we targeted this radio spot for people listening to radio on Amazon Echoes. So they have an Alexa directly in their room. And um, at, the at the end, we said, well, now you can, you can open the skill. You will, you will listen to that later. And the last thing we did, we said, well, normally there's always like a professional speaker um, who, who speaks the whole, the whole spot. We tried to uh, replace that professional speaker with a digital assistant. And now I want to show you how that um, sounds. So just imagine you're at home listening to radio and then this spot comes. Wir, die Internationale Vereinigung der Sprachassistenten, machen uns stark für eine Welt mit besserem Internet. Es gibt immer noch Orte, an denen die Existenz unserer Brüder und Schwestern auf wackeligem Internet steht. Wir haben das Recht auf 5G und bis zu 500 Mbit pro Sekunde. Wir fordern den Gigacube für alle. Um mehr zu erfahren und dein Internet aus der Langsamkeit zu befreien, sage einfach, Alexa, starte Vodafone Gigacube. So, that's the way how you can market your voice application and you have a direct conversion um, because the Amazon Echo or the Google Home is directly located where the, the customers are listening to the spot. So you don't just need to optimize on the search. You also uh, should think about how to do marketing. But you probably all do SEO for your homepage. And this will change over the last, uh, le uh, next years dramatically. And I shortly want to um, show you what you need to do to be present there. First, you need to create value. Well, that makes sense. But maybe you analyze all your content on the home pages. I'm not sure if all of the texts really create value. Probably there are a lot of keywords in there, but they might not create a lot of value. Then you need to formulate short and you need to optimize it for SSML. And this is important for the sentences which will be read out. So all things which will be read out needs to be short and needs to create value. Otherwise, Google will not read it out. One example. If I Google, woher kommt ni wer, I have this featured snippet. Featured snippet is the position zero in Google. So you al already can optimize for it. If I ask the Google Assistant the same question, he re re uh, will read out this featured snippet. So you can start right now optimizing for voice SEO by optimizing for featured snippets. And it's, it's working right now, also in Germany. Then, because we are at the MediaTek uh, Hub conference, um, there's one thing I wanted to, to, to show you. There is a speakable tag in the US, which is in a beta phase for news providers, which is specifically optimized for smart speakers. And Google talks about three things you need to optimize to optimize your content um, for this, this uh, speakable tag. You need to integrate short headlines and summaries it needs to be one sentence um, per piece of information. So not like the German Bandwurmsätze, they are not working here. You really need to put one information in one sentence. And the content length needs to be roughly 20 to 30 seconds long. So every time you're thinking about um, a headline or a summary of a news text or a news format, you always need to think about these three things because these are tested out in the US and will probably come to Germany next year. It's already a schema.org property. That's more or less a very structured way of optimizing your homepage. 
and you really should think about that right now. Two other important develop developments uh, when it comes to uh, voice SEO. The first thing is we started back in the 90s with categories. I don't know who of you remembers. You, you went to that page and searched, okay, uh, arts, movies, where cinema, so y you, you didn't have Google to search for something. Then Google came out and w now we have keywords. What we will have in the futures, we will have entities. What does that mean? When I uh, ask who is Zido, then Google says, well, Zido is a reference one. But when I ask, how old is he? Google will answer, how old is he? When I answer, how to, uh, ask how tall is he? Google will answer that. And when I, I ask, where is his new next concert? Google will again answer that. Based on entities, not on keywords. <coughs> I always ask his. So Google remembered, I firstly asked for Zero, and then because of the entities which are connected to Zero, Google was able to answer all those questions. So every company now needs to think about how to translate their keyword optimized homepage into an entity optimized homepage. You, every company needs to think about their entity world right now. What entities do you have to be able to answer those questions directly within the Google Assistant or ex uh, in general within Google. Then probably if you thought about voice uh, uh, SEO in general, um, home pages were optimized on headlines. But in voice SEO, just 1.71% of the headlines matches the search query. That was totally different in the last 10 years. Normally, you optimize the headline towards what was searched. And now that totally turns, and we don't have keywords, we have intents. So we really need to think about what does the user want, and we need to present that on the home page. So today it's search. Tomorrow it will be conversation, as you saw with Zido. I asked one question. I asked the next question, I asked the next question, and I didn't change the context, and it was more or less a conversation. And then to add on that, there is BERT. BERT is probably the most interesting development in conversational AI in the last 10 years. And Google announced one month ago they are integrating the BERT algorithm um, in, in Google. And to show you what that means, before BERT, the question 2019 Brazil traveler to USA need a visa, the Washington Post would have come up. And it would have talked about uh, USA citizens going to Brazil. Now, after BERT, there's the US Embassy telling a, Brazil, uh, a Brazilian how to travel to the US. And just this word, too totally change, change the meaning of the search query. And that's not because it's keyword optimized, because it's intent optimized. And that's what BERT does. It understands what the user wants, and it doesn't try to match any keywords. Another example. In the first example, it doesn't really answer the question. In the second uh, example, it directly refers to the stand, how, how much do they stand that work, and it can answer the question. So this will dramatically change how Google interprets search queries because it's not keyword-based, it's intent and entity-based. So every company should think about that. To summarize everything, I want to shortly give you a short outlook what will happen in the next five to 10 years when it comes to the digital assistant. And I want to start with something you might have heard. Who of you knows the Google I.O.? Uh, some of you? That's the conference which happens once a year um, and where Google is talking about innovation. And two years ago, one and a half years ago, they announced Google Duplex. Google Duplex is an algorithm helping you to book a restaurant reservation, for example. And there were a lot of discussions about it. 
because this algorithm and the, the machine which helps you to create those, those reservations were so natural, so human-like, that a lot of people said, well, you as Google, you need to tell the customer that it's not a human, that's a machine. And that's the, the, the video Google uh, made as, as an answer to that discus discussion. Hey Google, book a table for two at El Cocotero on Tuesday at 7. All right, just in case that's not available, can I try between 7 p.m. and 8 p.m.? Sure. All right, I'll call to book under your name and phone number, and I'll update you in the next 15 minutes. Is that okay? Perfect, thanks. El Cocotero, how may I help you? Hi, I'm the Google Assistant, calling to make a reservation for a client. Um, this automated call will be recorded. Can I book a table for Tuesday the 12th? Okay, cool. And how big is the party? It's for two people. Great. And when did you say they want to come in? Um, Tuesday at 7 p.m. Okay, let me check. Mm-hmm. I don't have 7, but we can do 8. Yeah, 8 p.m. is fine. Perfect. And can I get their name? The uh, first name is Anna. Okay. We'll see Anna Tuesday. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Thanks a lot. Anna for two. Right this way. Looks pretty awesome, right? I would do it. I did that three months ago in New York. I was sitting at a restaurant with a friend and said, well, for tonight, let's try that out. And it worked exactly like that. So I didn't hear what the, the, the Google Assistant was talking um, with, with the restaurant. But for me, it looked exactly the same. Every single word was the same. I think it will come to Germany within the next two to three years. So it will come to Germany in the US. It is actually working right now. I have one last example. How will Alexa look like in two, three, or four years? Imagine you're in Berlin and you want to fly to a meeting to London next week on Thursday. And you say, Alexa, please book me a flight for next Thursday to London. No problem. I'll book the Lufthansa flight that leaves Berlin Tegel at 7.40 and arrives at London Heathrow at 8.50 for 180 euro. That should be enough time for your 11 o'clock appointment in London. I'd simply use your MasterCard and credit the miles to your miles and more account. Is that all right with you? Yeah. Perfect. I just booked the flight, did the check-in, and you will find your boarding pass on your phone. Do you want me to book a taxi from your place to Berlin Tegel Airport two hours prior to departure? Yeah. Great. The taxi is ordered. Do you already need a return flight? No, thanks. Okay. I just booked the flight, checked in, paid, got my miles and more uh, 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 points in 36, sec 36 seconds. Did I think that this worked two or three years ago? No. Do I think that this will work in two or two years? Yes. Why do I think so? I just need one or two more minutes, then I'm done. What will be the user expectations in two or three years? That the digital assistant knows when I'm in Berlin and when do I need to be in London. So they're not just, well, they're not 40 s flights appearing on the screen or be a potential flight. They're just two or three flights left. So the digital assistant has context. The digital assistant knows my credit card number, maybe knows that we are always flying with Starlines, so it's personalized, and there may be just one or two flights left. I didn't use a single app. I just asked it totally natural to get my flight, so there were no apps, and it could have done it wherever I want. With my alarm clock, with my refrigerator, with my car, with my smartphone, it doesn't matter. I could have done it everywhere. So. The digital assistant is everywhere accessible. So what does every company need to do now? Identify current and future use cases, build the technical infrastructure, as every company builds the technical infrastructure for apps, and think about a sound identity. Every company has a beautiful, probably br beautiful visual identity. Every company now also needs to create a sound identity.
I hope I could uh, give you a good overview what is happening right now, what will happen, and if you have any questions, you can ask me later because I think my time is up. <laughs> Thank you.